What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Jim Cornette on the modern hysterical smart fans. This should be very interesting because we all know Jim Cornette doesn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> he doesn't care about what people tend to, to say about him on Twitter or wherever at on social media. He don't care, bro. He's one of those old school people. It is what it is. He's going to say his opinion on it. Whether you like him or not, he's going to stand on his opinion. He's going to stand on business, as the kids say, on how he feels about the wrestling industry. Whether he's supporting one of your favorite wrestlers or whether he's shitting on your favorite wrestler. That's just how he is. So it should be very interesting to see what he has to say about the hysterical modern day smart fans. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I love the wrestling community at times but some of y'all on twitter bro are just absolutely some of the worst nerd virgins i have ever seen i i, I can only assume you're a nerd virgin because how invested some of y'all get i literally saw a tweet the other day someone hoping that cm punk gets injured in 2024 bro why and people agreeing with it. Like, what are y'all doing? It's not that serious. Relax. Like, there's no way a woman would actively want to sleep with you. And you get this invested in someone's life that much that you wish harm upon them. What? It's fucking disgusting. So this should be very interesting, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. Damn it. I'm trying to get it to start. I just have to point this out to you because someone posted in the uh, Cult of Cornet Facebook group. The website Voices of Wrestling put up an article, apparently. What CM Punk took from AEW by someone named Jesse Collings. Okay, now he's being, he's being accused of shoplifting, <laughs> taking home uh, company uh, paper clips, uh, <laughs> office stationery, what? While some pundits would claim that Punk's firing exposed AEW as a minor league company unable to handle a true top star, uh. the real damage that Punk did to AEW was done almost entirely before he was fired. Punk took away AEW's external innocence what? and optimism for a better wrestling future. What? Bro, y'all are. Oh my god, bro! That is, took what? Let's let's see what he, let's see what he has to say, bro. What? And replaced it with the traditional divisiveness and drama that has become all too familiar with wrestling fans. External innocence <laughs> by publicly declaring himself as an enemy of the elite. Is that like wearing a virginity condom? <laughs> when do you hear this? By he said it. <laughs> I literally just said at the beginning of this video, you have to be a certified nerd virgin to take this shit that seriously, bro. You've never felt a woman's insides ever in your life. There's no way without you paying for it that a woman would willingly sleep with you if you move this way, if you act this way over a wrestler. This is ridiculous. By publicly declaring himself as an enemy of the elite, he exploited a neoconservative ideology oh that had God. existed since before the company started. Punk had become a proxy in the never-ending war some pundits, most notably Jim Cornette, <laughs> had against the Young Bucks for doing too many flips and for ruining the wrestling business. <laughs> Punk, the company's biggest star, had become... Is this, is this, wait a minute, is this one of those AI articles? This can't be a human being. This has got to be some kind of artificial intelligence, mm, uh, lack of intelligence. This is an example of the Probably mini fan for sure. who can't grasp reality, who had the myth and dream of AEW crumble and they need someone to blame it on. And it was you, and then they found a bigger star. And it became Punk. And they, it was Punk. And he's they, not even there anymore. And they're still blaming him for killing AEW. They was, dreamed oh. of wrestling with external innocence? Bro, it's fucking stupid, How about the bro. fact that 
not liking the Bucks is a neoconservative ideology. What is a neoconservative ideology? Because liberals would accept the bucks and conservatives would reject all the flips. Oh, and this fucking stupid, bro. I don't even always agree with Jim Cornette's take, but I understand he comes from a very different generation of wrestling. It was very different back then, so I can't expect him to just like some of the stuff I grew up on. Some of the stuff I grew up on, I know for a fact he didn't like. He wasn't a big fan of. He was there for the making of some of the stuff I enjoy liking <laughs> in wrestling. So I'm not going to always agree on it on his points. But guess what? I'm not about to sit up here and, and write a 10-page essay talking about why this person is the reason why a certain company is, is de being destroyed. No, it's not that fucking serious. Jesus Christ killing the wrestling business as it's no, I, would re I would reject the the assholes first and their assholes first ladies and gentlemen the good news is this is a very very small minority of the AEW fans even who think this crazy who act like this on twitter and quite frankly this audience is significantly larger and you, and you know it's and it's people like this that give the the lefties <laughs> a bad name because just because they're on our side they're they're and they're mentally deficient <laughs> uh they they speak up and they call attention to themselves and and the right wingers use that to say well look they're all nuts no just well you got more nuts than we got assholes we just yeah. have to put up with these nuts you got you got them nuts it always comes back <laughs> to the same thing the elite are just these innocent sweethearts who do They're nothing not. wrong and have never done anything wrong, and we should just all bow in their presence. No. Give them flowers, get out of their way, and be happy that they graced us in the wrestling business with their presence. Stop it. And some of us say that's completely fucking nuts. <sighs> these guys are mediocre, and they may not even be that anymore. If Dave Meltzer, as their press agent, did that for them, he should have been retained by, like, fucking Bill Cosby. I mean, it, how the fuck it just as as Uncle Dave's, you know, prose and poetry in in praise of the buckaroos and their, you know, the rest of the Cucamonga kids <laughs> led to this kids. level of fervor. I know that the cracks have started and, and people are seeing through him now, but this level of commitment, I mean, even. Even Ricky and Robert personally going from town to town and fucking a lot of these girls individually didn't inspire this much loyalty. <laughs> Damn. Individually. You have to stress individually. Individually. Well, Damn. sometimes in <laughs> small, small and casual groups. But you know what I'm saying. Each person got individual attention. You think if Ricky Morton did that stuff now, people would be sending around photos of him with all the girls at the merch table saying, see no men. No man in the photos. He's a danger to the locker room. No, they they'd still be sending around Polaroids of Robert Gibson, probably, if they had uh, been people in people really gotta like felt some type of way because CM Punk was taking pictures with all the the um a lot of the women from NXT, but none of the guys. It's like, bro, just just oh my god. Like y'all Y'all worry about the wrong things in life. Y'all wish some of those women in NXT would even look at y'all, let alone want to take a picture with y'all. Stop it. Involved, but anyway. Any final thoughts on just in general? Because, you know, very often when Dave Meltzer gets attacked for something on Twitter or just responds to someone because he's trying to get some attention for it, he'll point to you and Norm Dooley. <laughs> you know, don't look at me. I'm not the one who started it. The first six-star match or the first five-star match was then, which he didn't even know about until you told him. So it's a hard defense to have for raising the star rating system. But you hear a lot of people point to you. You were there kind of at the beginning of what we call the smart fan. A very, very, very select few of you got into the wrestling business and did well. Eddie Gilbert, Paul Heyman, various people, and of course you. You see what's happened now. There are still fans who, you know, may have evolved, obviously, as time goes by. They're not thinking exactly like you did in 1982, but it's a similar thread, a similar mindset today, and they appreciate the good stuff. 
And then there are fans who think that anything that's new, anything that's flashy is best. Mm. And this is what everything should be. Mm. And if you reject that, you're the problem. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden your favorite show changes format, accept it. If not, you're out of touch. Mm -hmm. But what does it seem like? I mean, we just talked about this Voices of Wrestling article. There were never hysterical smart fans like there are today, were there? No, the smart mm -mm. fans in, in those days, uh, albeit, you know, so many fewer of them, mm -hmm. were the ones they, they would roll their eyes at, you know, they knew why Bulldog Bob Brown was getting the push in Kansas City. And a lot of them rolled their eyes at, at, at Dusty because he, you know, when you saw him for a long time and you were a smart fan, you know, it, it, it did wear on you. And, and that's part of the difference in being a smart fan in those days and not being a regular fan that still holds true today. A lot of the regular fans like the guys that draw money that the smart fans are not enamored of. But nevertheless, the point is they Facts, weren't hysterical about, uh, you know, about any of this shit as far as... Throw Choshu out of wrestling! Yes, it, it's it's lunacy. They, the smart fans at that point in time had to apply themselves more, be luckier, be in the right place, you know, learn more on how to interact, et cetera, et cetera. It was harder, so and you took care of it. But the thing is, the rating system, which we've done essays on and talked about endlessly, and I'm not going to rehash all that except to say that it was a rib to begin with between me and Norman. And then Norman, a way of quantifying something for Norman to the people who got his results sheet, which was probably in the three dozen people range or whatever, just so that he could kind of relay what he thought of the matches on the show. And Meltzer, who has the many similar characteristics of Tony Khan when it comes to <laughs> numbers and output of words either written on a page or spoken or whatever, many similar characteristics, took that and fucking ran with it and made something out of it to the point where people have debated about it ever since. Mm. But the... So that's <laughs> kind of how the star rating system came about. I mean, granted, I don't really take, you know, buy into it too much because at the end of the day, it's subjective. If you feel like it's one of the greatest matches, that's cool. If you feel like it's, you know, not one of the greatest matches or it's trash, that's cool. So I don't really go too crazy over it. It's one person's opinion, you know, versus whoever else watched the match. But it's very interesting to know that he kind of uh, came up with it just as like a, you know, as a joke. Wouldn't even meant to be taken seriously. That's crazy. I've talked about the ratings as, you know, one star was, yeah, glad that's over. Two stars was kind of what we expected. Three stars was, wow, that was really good. And four stars was they tore the fucking house down. But we were still looking at it, not only from the reaction of the fans, but the reaction of us, because we were the fans too. Mm. We still weren't fully smart to the insides of the business, as I've explained. And I know that if guys had been trying moves and obviously fucking either cooperating and failing, mm -hmm. or even obviously cooperating and exhibiting them, that they would have been booed by the people and they wouldn't have been into it and they would have been tearing that house down. Those people, if you, you cannot grade or critique something is good when 30 or 40 percent of the shit that's tried looks fucking shitty <laughs> or that there are obvious buzz kills or what the fuck did they do that for yeah <laughs> or, there's, there's definitely in, in, in modern re wrestling now there's a lot of what why why did they do that what 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 was the what was the point in that even even in the attitude era even in one of my favorite eras, there's when I, you know, as a kid, you're not really paying attention. But as you get older and you really look at it or you go back and watch those old footages, old matches, you're like, that didn't make a lick of sense why he did that. It didn't. At all. 
He didn't. Like, setting the table on fire and then Edge willingly diving off to spear Mick Foley through said flaming table. That doesn't make sense for Edge to do it. But guess fucking what? That was a cool fucking spot. As a young me watching, I was like, holy shit. And it doesn't make sense. And obviously, that's not part of the attitude there, but I'm just using that as a comparison. It doesn't make a lick of sense. You would burn yourself. But, I mean, it was part of the stipulation. It was a hardcore match. Fuck it, right? <laughs> Well, who the baby faced, who the heel is, who are we supposed to cheer for? What the fuck is the issue? What's going on? Any of that. Mm -hmm. That would have all been, been um, a detriment to the rating the way that it was originally envisioned by us founders. Me and Norm. Good old weasel. The founders. <laughs> founders us founders. The ratings in his, uh, rating system. Crazy. No, if they'd slipped off the top rope and taken three times to do the thing, I don't care if they goddamn cured cancer and exposed the invisible man in the rest of the match. They still <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. And the people in the stands would have been hooting at it. So that's that. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens, because I think there's a, and we'll move on after this, but there's a lot of fans who grew up reading The Observer who learned a lot about the business reading The Observer, and in a lot of ways, the way they thought about wrestling started to match Dave's. Because mm. Dave put out a newsletter that every week, everyone looked forward to getting in their mailbox. You hoped you didn't miss a day. Mm -hmm. And now we have fans who don't see The Observer the same way. You know, Dave isn't the person breaking the news anymore. Dave isn't the person in... I mean, he gets in the middle of the story. I can't say he's not in the middle of the story. That's, that's part of the problem, maybe. He'll squirm in there one way or the other. But wrestling media, wrestling news, all these things have evolved. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have the first group of people who start thinking about wrestling and grading wrestling, if you're going to look at it that way, but thinking about it in a different way because the Observer has started losing influence and you're hearing more people question Dave's way of thinking about these matches, which again has been an evolving thing. Now it's, I hated it, but the room loved it. Five stars. <laughs> but I think we're going to start seeing the first group of people very soon who think about wrestling in a very different way. And again, this show is a big audience and people will probably be surprised how many young listeners there are. I think people appreciate wrestling beyond just the way Dave does. Hmm. Can we all just have something that makes a little sense? That's the question. Nah, this was a good one, man. This was a good video. I definitely gonna have to give this a like. But you know, I definitely agree with you know what Jim Cornette saying, and just in general, man, when it comes to the rating system, once again, you don't have to buy into whatever someone says. You know, if you enjoyed it, you enjoyed it. That's cool. You know, if someone you know, doesn't like your favorite wrestler, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? There are some wild takes out there that you kind of, what? But outside of that, man, it's, it's, don't take it, don't take it that seriously. To the, the nerd virgins out there, just chill, bro. Going to 2024 realizing at the end of the day, what these wrestlers do with these companies that involve millions of dollars, why are you sitting up there stressing over it, over it, or or really getting that riled up that you wish an injury on someone? It's not that fucking serious. Chill out. Seriously, talk to a woman, bro. <laughs> something, or talk to a guy if you swing that way. Whatever, do something else. It's okay. It's okay. You you don't have to like every wrestler. You don't have to like every wrestling company. You don't have to like any other person that doesn't like your favorite wrestler. It's okay, bro. It's Y'all just be taking this shit way too seriously. It should be supposed to be for entertainment at the end of the day. And y'all be going overboard sometimes on social media when it comes to certain people. So comment down below. Let me know, man. Have y'all encountered? I'm sure y'all have. I'm, I'm willing to bet if you're on social media on YouTube, on Twitter. Y'all have encountered a few of these people. I personally have as well. But what's the worst encounter y'all had with just 
like the worst wrestling nerd virgin. Like you knew for a fact they've never felt a woman's touch. Just how they responded or what they said on social media. You just like, oh yeah, this dude is a goddamn nerd loser. <laughs> Let me know what's the worst encounter you've had. What, how did it start up? And uh, comment it down below. But I appreciate all love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 150K. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one.